This is part two of the assembly tutorial for the compact robot arm and controller. If you haven't watched part one yet, I've linked it down in the description. Let's get started. Part two. Okay, in part one we left off with this assembly. We'll put that aside for now and use this half of the rotational base. We'll also need another one of those circular servo horns. And we'll attach it just the same as the last one. And then we can press it onto our main assembly. Now we'll take the other half of our rotational base and feed all of the servo wires through that hole. Now we're ready to work with the main base. And all of these parts were printed on the QD X Plus 3 3D printer. Like I said in part 1 of this tutorial, this printer is incredibly fast and well worth the price tag. I've linked this printer in the description if you want to check it out. First we will glue this ring to the base, and line up the pin in the front. Next we will cut our clear piece of acrylic to fit in this window. And you can just glue this on the inside. Then we'll insert our base servo and screw it down using those four screws in the servo bag. Next we'll press this X-shaped servo horn onto the servo and screw it down using that screw in the servo bag. Then we will feed all of our servo wires from the main assembly into the hole as shown. And then you can snap the arm around the ring we glued on. And you can just wrap all of the servo wires around the base servo to make sure they're all about the same length. Okay, now we'll start with the wiring. So we will need our bottom board mounting plate, our Arduino Uno, or Leonardo in this case, and our servo driver module. And we can secure those boards down with 8 M2 by 4 mm screws. Then we can press our switch into the base. and we'll glue our female T-plug connector to the base. And then solder the positive side to the switch. And this is how I have mine wired. So the positive side of the female connector goes into the switch, and I soldered on a smaller wire to the ground pin of the T-plug for better flexibility. And then we'll glue one 4-pin connector and one 3-pin connector on top of each other just like this. Then we'll press those connectors into the hole and glue them on to the back cover panel. So I already have the controller built, but it's actually a pretty simple concept. And all of the wiring for this controller is in the wiring diagram right below the subscribe button. So all of the potentiometers are mounted on using a washer and a nut. 
and all of the parts are just press fit onto the potentiometers. So starting with the switch, we just have one ground pin and one signal wire. The ground pin from the switch connects directly to the closest potentiometer's ground terminal. And then the signal wire from the switch goes all the way through to the connector. Then on the potentiometer, the positive pin connects to the positive terminal on the next potentiometer, and the ground pin connects to the ground terminal on the next potentiometer. And then the middle signal wire on the potentiometer goes all the way through to another pin on the connector. So that process of ground going to the next ground, and positive going to the next positive, and then the signal wire going all the way through, just repeats throughout all the potentiometers. And then the ground and the positive wire from the last potentiometer go directly to the connector. And then our plug is just another 4-pin connector glued on top of a 3-pin connector. So in our plug there's 7 pins, one of those is ground, one is 5 volts, and the rest are all signal wires. Okay, so here's the wiring for this arm. And I have linked a detailed wiring diagram in the description. And I've split the LED wires with the plug in the middle. And by looking at the wiring diagram, you should be able to tell where these servos plug into the driver. First, you'll slide the back cover through the opening, and then you can close the bottom. And the back cover will be attached with four M2 by four millimeter screws. And this plate will go on the bottom to hide the servo wires. So both of the bottom plates are attached using seven M2 by six millimeter screws. And the two stabilizing feet are mounted using two M3 by eight millimeter screws. Okay, now we're ready to upload the code, but before we upload, we need to make sure all the motors are disengaged and able to move freely. So just make sure all the servos can move freely because we need to set them to those zero positions after we upload the code. And the wrist servo can be disengaged by removing that middle gear. We also need to take the servo horn off of the gripper. And we need to make sure the base of servo horn is not pressed onto the servo. Then we can plug in our Arduino, our power, and our controller. make sure that the controller is in its starting position. And before we upload the code, we need to install this library. So just follow what I do on screen here. After you've installed the library, you can press verify and then upload the code. And after it's uploaded, all of the servos should move to match the potentiometers without actually moving the arm. After they've all moved to their starting position, you can unplug the Arduino and turn off the power. Then you can reinstall the middle gear on the wrist and reinsert all the servo horns onto the servos. And now we can attach the two rotating base halves using two M3 by eight millimeter screws. And then the last thing we need to do is glue this cover over the gears. Alright, you made it to the end. Hopefully everything worked fine for you, but if you still have any questions, you can leave them in the comments.
I hope you can have some fun with this robot arm, and if this tutorial helped you, please consider subscribing and liking the video. And if you'd like some early and behind-the-scenes content, my Patreon is always an option. Thanks!